Yashar Jasher 62. In that year, being the 79th year of Yashar El, going down to Mitzrayim, died Reuven, the son of Yaakov, in the land of Mitzrayim. Reuven was a hundred and twenty-five years old when he died, and they put him into a coffin, and he was given into the hands of his children, and in the eightieth year died his brother, Dan. He was a hundred and twenty years at his death, and he was also put into a coffin and given into the hands of his children. And in that year died Husham, king of Edom, and after him reigned Hadad, the son of Bidad, for thirty-five years. And in the eighty-first year died Yishakar, the son of Yaakov, in Mitzrayim. And Yishakar was a hundred and twenty-two years old at his death. And he was put into a coffin in Mitzrayim and given into the hands of his children. And in the 82nd year died Asher, his brother. He was 123 years old at his death. And he was placed in a coffin in Mitzrayim and given into the hands of his children. <clears throat> And in, <clears throat> and in the 83rd year died God. He was 125 years old at his death. And he was put into a coffin in Mitzrayim and given in, into the hands of his children. And it came to pass in the 84th year that is, the fiftieth year of the reign of Hadad, son of Bidad, king of Edom, that Hadad assembled all the children of Esau, and he got his whole army in readiness, about four hundred thousand men, and he directed his way to the land of Moab, and he went to fight with Moab, and to make them tributary to him. And the children of Moab heard this thing, and they were very much afraid, and they sent to the children of Midian to assist them in fighting with Hadad, son of Bidad, king of Edom. And Hadad came unto the land of Moab, and Moab and the children of Midian went out to meet him, and they placed themselves in battle array against him in the field of Moab. And Hadad fought with Moab, and there fell of the children of Moab, and the children of Midian, many slain ones, about two hundred thousand men, and the battle was very severe upon Moab. And when the children of Moab saw that the battle was sore upon them, they weakened their hands and turned their backs and left the children of Midian to carry on the battle. And the children of Midian knew not the intentions of Moab, but they strengthened, strengthened themselves in battle and fought with Hadad and all his host, and all Midian fell before him. And Hadad smote all Midian with a heavy smiting, and he slew them with the edge of the sword. He left none remaining of those who came to assist Moab. And when all the children of Midian had perished in battle, and the children at Moab had escaped, Hadad made all Moab at that time tributary to him, and they became under his hand, and they gave a yearly tax 
as it was ordered. And Hadad turned and went back to his land. And at the revolution of the year, when the rest of the people of Midian that were in the land heard that all their brethren had fallen in battle with Hadad for the sake of Moab, because the children of Moab had turned their backs in battle and left Midian to fight. Then five of the princes of Midian resolved with the rest of their brethren who remained in their land to fight with Moab to avenge the cause of their brethren. And the children of Midian sent to all their brethren the children of the east and all their brethren. All the children of Keturah came to assist Midian to fight with Moab. And the children of Moab heard this thing and they were greatly afraid that all the children of the east had assembled together against them for battle. And they, the children of Moab, sent a memorial to the land of Edom, to Hadad, the son of Bidad, saying, Come now unto us, and assist us, and we will smite Midian. For they all assembled together, and have come against us, with all their brethren, the children of the east, to battle to avenge the cause of Midian that fell in battle. And Hadad, son of Bidad, king of Edom, went forth with his, with his whole army and went to the land of Moab to fight with Midian. And Midian and the children of the east fought with Moab in the field of Moab. And the battle was very fierce between them. And Hadad smote all the children of Midian and the children of the east with the edge of the sword. And Hadad at that time delivered Moab from the hand of Midian. And those that remained of Midian and of the children of the east fled before Hadad and his army. And Hadad pursued them to their land and smote them with a very heavy slaughter, and the slain fell in the road. And Hadad delivered Moab from the hand of Midian, for all the children of Midian had fallen by the edge of the sword, and Hadad turned and went back to his land. And from that day forth, the children of Midian hated the children of Moab, because they had fallen in battle for their sake. And there was a great and mighty enmity between them all the days. And all that were found of Midian in the road of the land of Moab perished by the sword of Moab. And all that were found of Moab in the road of the land of Midian perished by the sword of Midian. Thus did Midian unto Moab, and Moab unto Midian, for many days. And it came to pass at that time that Yahuda, the son of Yaachov, died in Mitzrayim, in the eighty-sixth year of Yaachov's going down to Mitzrayim. And Yahuda was a hundred and twenty-nine years old at his death. And they embalmed him and put him into a coffin, and he was given into the hands of his children. And in the eighty-ninth year died Naphtali. He was a hundred and thirty-two years old. And he was put into a coffin and given into the hands of his children. And it came to pass in the ninety-first year of Yashar'el, going down to Mitzrayim, that is, in the thirtieth year of the reign of Sepho, 
the son of Eliphaz, the son of Esau, over the children of Ketim. The children of Africa came upon the children of Ketim to plunder them as usual, but they had not come upon them for these 13 years. And they came to them in that year, and Sipho, the son of Eliphaz, went out to them with some of his men and smote them desperately. And the troops of Africa fled from before Sipho, and the slain fell before him. And Sipho and his men pursued them, going on and smiting them until they were near unto Africa. And Angius, king of Africa, heard the thing which Sepho had done, and it vexed him exceedingly. And Angius was afraid of Sepho all the days.